I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to dip dye some yarn into two different bright colors to create a soft variegated colorway. I love dip dyeing yarn and this is something that I used to do a lot here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel, but I don't play with it as often anymore and after using the technique in some videos where I used a variety of different techniques, there were some requests for more dip dyeing. So let's dip dye yarn! But before we jump in and talk about our colors, I would like to give a huge shout out and thank you to today's lab partner, Suzanne. Suzanne, thank you so much for being my lab partner! Today we are going to play with Dharma Acid Dyes in Frozen Blue and Fluorescent Lemon. And both of these colors are very bright. Fluorescent Lemon is a fluorescent color, so it will glow under a black light. Frozen is not, but it's a blue that is bright and works really, really well with other bright colors. And so, let's go over to the dye bath. In my 8 quart stainless steel dye pot, I added 16 cups of water, but it's been on for a while, and to me it looks like the water level has reduced, so I'm not actually sure how much water is in here anymore. I would say we have between 8 and 16 cups of water. And I'm going to add 2 tablespoons of white vinegar to our pot. Frozen blue will strike to yarn faster than fluorescent lemon. So we're going to start with the blue color. And I just added 25 milliliters of our 1% stock solution of frozen blue. We can always add more color to our dye bath, but you can't really remove color from the pot easily. Certainly with dip dyeing, you don't have to put the yarn in and absorb it all. You can remove the yarn, uh, but it's better to start with less color than you think you want. Our yarn is 200 grams of Knit Picks Swish DK. This yarn is 100% superwash merino wool, and if you'd like to learn more about it, I do have Knit Picks affiliate links down in the video description. I pre-soaked this yarn overnight in some plain tap water. And now we are gonna dip dye. So the reason why I wanna start with the color that strikes faster is that it'll be easier for me to then control uh, the color of the yellow as we go on. But if I really did have 16 cups of water, two tablespoons of vinegar isn't that much. And so that will mean that, yes, we are clearly soaking up that color quickly, but it does also give us time to move through. And honestly, it could have been a little bit faster than I wanted. I didn't mind. I wouldn't mind if we got blue all over. Uh, we will probably have some yellow remaining once we get around to the other side. Uh, but it is very, very pretty. So dip dyeing gives a very soft. Uh, kind of colorway, a softer transition than say doing immersion or hand painting. And the colorways are fun because they can pool. Uh, you can get spirals if you use this in a hat or something, or even micro stripes with fingering weight yarn if you're using it on socks. And so if I wanted the blue to go up on the yarn more, then I should have dipped even faster. <laughs> Or I could have started with less acid, so that way the color would strike slower. All of those are choices, but I don't mind if we end up with a lot of the uh, yellow coming onto the yarn. But actually, I also wouldn't mind if the blue was a little bit brighter. So with the amount of dye I started with, uh, 25 milliliters. Frozen is a premix pastel, and the amount of color that I used was enough to give us a total depth of shade, if I put it all over the yarn, of 0.25%, or the equivalent of a quarter gram of dye per 100 grams of yarn. But since we're dip dyeing, we have more of a range of depths of shade that we see of the blue. But I do think I want more blue overall, so I grabbed another 25 milliliters of the frozen blue dye. Rinsing out the graduated cylinder, and then I'm going to give this a stir, and we're going to dip dye again. Because that's the thing. If you want a deeper color, all you have to do is dip dye the yarn again. Uh, you can add more color. It's easier to make colors more intense. It is harder to make them lighter after the fact. So that is my uh, official recommendation. 
And again, we're soaking up the color really, really quickly, but this time I'm able to get a little bit of blue all the way down. Again, I don't mind if we feel some of the yellow at the tip, but I wanted to get a lot of the beautiful greens that I know we can get from mixing and blending these two colors together. So we're just starting with a bit of a deeper blue. So I'm gonna leave this in the pot, I think for just about five minutes to make sure we've sucked in all of those blues. And then I will remove the yarn and we can get set up to do the yellow. I forgot to set a timer, that happens sometimes. But it's definitely been at least five minutes. Uh, with dip dyeing at a certain stage, you don't need to make sure that the color is completely perfectly set because uh, we are going to be doing another round of color so there'll be more time to heat set everything. I dip dyed yarn as part of the March 2022 Chemnitz Dye Along live stream and I got some questions there about whether or not you need to steam set dip dyed yarn and the answer is that it depends. <laughs> If I am leaving the yarn in the pot at the end of the dip dyeing process for 30 minutes, then it doesn't need to be steam set. But if I'm dip dyeing a colorway and maybe I don't want to absorb all the color in the pot because I like the color I'm seeing on the yarn, then I might steam set the yarn for 30 minutes to make sure those colors are well set and there's heat long enough. I'm sure I have some old videos where I did things differently, but I like to try to make sure that I have at least 30 minutes of heat after I last added dye to the yarn. And so that's something that I try to do now uh, going forward. So I hope that answers this question. And while I have your attention, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. I'm now going to add 25 milliliters of the fluorescent lemon, but we're gonna let uh, this sit a bit because I want the yarn to cool so that way I can easily move the zip ties around. For the next round in our dip dyeing project, I wanna take these removable nylon zip ties I used to hold the yarn and move them down to the other side. And unfortunately, there's a little bit of disorder there, um, but we're gonna move this, both of them down to the other side. So that way we have the deepest blue up near the zip ties and our lightest, palest color towards the other end. And let's start dip dyeing into the yellow. In general, uh, with dip dyeing, you probably want your skeins to be a little bit more ordered. Ooh, look at that green. So that way you could have something that is more reproducible. In general, if your yarn is a little bit tangled, I recommend waiting until it's dry to try to fix that. Um, but oh, this is so pretty. Now, one thing I did not think of, and I'm gonna leave the yarn out for a moment, is to add more acid. Because I mentioned already that the yellow, okay, I added another two and a half tablespoons of white vinegar. The yellow will take longer to strike than the blues did. So I'm adding a little bit on that deepest blue to sort of smooth things. But this is really, really, really pretty. So as I was saying, some tangling is not ideal if you want something for planned pooling. So say you wanna knit it so that way you end up seeing like something plaid. Uh, but otherwise, it shouldn't be a problem. I recommend trying to do any detangling once your yarn is dry. But the one end isn't that yellow, but we've got a yellowish green all the way to our blue, and I think it is beautiful. And I don't mind if our blue end turns a little bit of a blue green, which is why I'm adding it all the way in. But I also think that because there's not very much color left in the pan, it is okay for me to add the end in all the way. And now we can let this heat set for 30 minutes here in the steam pan. If I wanted to leave some of the blue out and so I left that out of the pan for a bit, I would wait until all of the yellow absorbed and then steam set because if I didn't want potentially to get some yellow on our deepest end, 
then I wouldn't necessarily want to put it in the pot where I had the yellow dye. So that would be a circumstance where I would steam set. But today I kind of wanted some color coverage of both colors all over the yarn. And that's what we did. The 30 minutes are up. Ooh, so we did absorb more yellow up here. It is a gorgeous teal. We've got a beautiful green gradient here. There actually is still some yellow in there, but I'm still gonna remove, uh, no. I'm like debating, but I'm like, oh, I did add more acid, didn't I? I added more acid already, but you know what? There's no harm in adding a bit more. There we go. We'll add a little more. We'll wait 15 minutes and then we will uh, remove the yarn. Sometimes with some neons, there might be a little bit of some residual color, but while we wait, I am gonna turn the heat off. There'll be a lot of heat in here for a while anyway. And so we'll just wait 15 minutes and come back. Okay, the 15 minutes are up. And there's maybe still a tiny hint of yellow in there, but I am going to let it go and put our beautiful green and teal yarn uh, in a pan to cool completely so that way we can wash it. Let's wash our beautiful green, green, green yarn. Uh, this is so fun. This is really what I wanted. And so that's why when at first I had that blue that didn't go up all the way, I was like, I want a little bit more because I wanted to create like all these shades of green, but starting with, I mean, Frozen isn't a technical primary, but it's kind of color wise, you could consider it a primary. Now, when I say a technical primary, what do I mean? Uh, dye manufacturers will list primary colors as colors that are made with one dye pigment. And I'm gonna add some clear dish soap. We're rinsing with cool water. And so fluorescent lemon is a primary color. There's only one molecule in there. Frozen, I'm not sure how many colors it is because the blend, it doesn't always say what's in there, but there is more than one color in there. And so technically, I've never seen breaking with frozen, but in theory, it could cause breaking. But I don't see any color coming out in the rinse water, which is good. Um, so that's why when I'm like, oh, it's not technically a primary, I'm talking about primary dyes. If you want a bright blue primary color from Dharma, go with Caribbean blue. You'll just want to use, you'll just want to use a lot less of it because it is in way more pigmented than frozen. But anyway, I am going to finish rinsing out the soap then I'm gonna put the yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll take a look at the finished yarn. I am obsessed, Suze, with how these colors turned out. They are so bright, and I love that we have something here that goes from like yellow green to like a teal when we started with our yellow and blue. And that's because as we were dip dyeing, we allowed these colors to go over the entire skein. And therefore we have less of the blue and less of the yellow, but still the bright and fun. I actually really adore fluorescent lemon as a yellow. Yes, it is bright highlighter yellow, but I'm very excited to mix it with a lot more things moving forward because the color is just that much fun. How about under a black light? Ooh, ooh, let me adjust. Okay, I think that that is a little bit more accurate to what I am seeing. The yellow end, <laughs> that brighter end is glowing as one would expect because the fluorescent lemon is fluorescent and the frozen blue was not. Uh, this is so pretty. I mean, it is really, really bright. Yeah, if I turn off the light, you can see the colors. And then if I put it on, and you just see that, that yellow tone pop. Oh, it's so fun. Oftentimes if I'm gonna do the black light, I move into a closet to remove the natural light, but 
let me actually turn all the lights back on. But I do think that having a little bit of natural light around is a little more like what you might see if you have a black light around. And also sometimes moving everything into the closet where I remove all light is uh, just not in the cards for the day. <laughs> but please let me know in the comments below if you prefer me to show things in the closet or if looking at it here is just as fun to show off the fluorescence of the colors. Suze, thank you so much for being my lab partner for this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I really hope you are going to enjoy this very vibrant yarn. And I think that it'll, well, I don't know what kind of fiber craft you plan to use, but a dip dyed yarn like this can work up in a lot of different ways. If you're knitting in the round on something with a smaller circumference like mittens or socks, you may end up with some micro striping. And if you're working on something a bit wider like a hat, you could get some spiraling as the colors pull together. But since the transitions are a little bit soft, this is not an ideal colorway for say planned pooling because the length of some of the color sections may shift and so that might change how the colors pool as you work through the project. But anyway, if you would like to learn more about how you can become a lab partner like Suzanne, go and check out the listings in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. And Suze, thank you again so much for being my lab partner today. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really, really like dip dyeing yarn. It's something I used to do a lot more often and I'm trying to bring more of it into the channel as standalone videos and not just compilations of multiple techniques in one video. And so if you would like to see more dip dyeing, please let me know in the comments section and what specifically what kinds of dip dyeing techniques you would like to see me play around with. Like, should I do a standalone video of dipping into three colors again? Uh, I have videos like that, but it's been a while, I think. So I am always game to do something like that again. Please make sure you are subscribed to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel so you never miss any new videos. I post videos every Tuesday and Friday mornings, plus sometimes there's a lot more extra content in there as well, and you don't want to miss any of it. If you love the yarn I dye in the videos that I make and want to help support the channel on another level, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. I'll have a link down in the video description. But Chemnitz patrons get early access to the Dye Pod PS series every month, plus at different levels there's some other fun perks, like behind the scenes live streams where you can watch as I am working on a new episode of Dye Pod Weekly, answering questions and things along the way, and I really enjoy doing those streams. Uh, they're very low key and it's a lot of fun. You can find more information at patreon.com slash and that link is down below. Thank you so much for watching.